Hey, it's Tony from Adafruit, and in this video, I want to look at an interesting way to program this thing. This is the micro bit. So we looked at this in a previous video, which I'll put a link to in the description when this goes up on YouTube. Uh, I showed how to program this with micro Python, so you can control this board using Python code and even write that code in a really nice little web editor or desktop-based editor. Uh, but I'll show another thing in this video that lets you program this board using a visual programming language or a block-based programming language right from the web. So just in a web editor with no installation, you can program this board uh, with a really cool environment that was actually created by Microsoft. And so we'll take a quick look at this environment. And then I'll maybe show a little hint at what will come in the future for some of the Adafruit boards like the Feather M0 Express or actually the Circuit Playground Express boards. Uh, I'll show you a way to use this cool graphical editor uh, with some of these boards from Adafruit. And we'll talk a little bit about something cool that's a part of those Feather M0 Express boards uh, and the Circuit Playground Express boards. It's this UF2 bootloader. And Lady Ada has actually done some videos and some uh, deep dives into what this is. And so we'll just kind of touch on that briefly because I'll put a link to uh, the video that Lady Ada did, I think yesterday, on uh, what the UF2 bootloader is and why it's kind of interesting. But I'll kind of show you how to program this micro bit from a web editor that uses this block-based language. And then we'll look at a really similar workflow for the Feather M0 boards uh, and eventually the Circuit Playground Express boards. So let's just dive in and get started here. Uh, we'll jump into the main shot. Let's see, we'll turn that on, there we go. Uh, okay, so what I wanted to show, so like I said, uh, I'll put a link to the description uh, in the description to a video that I did uh, last week on programming the micro bit with micro Python and in that video I go into like what is the micro bit so this is a nice little all-in-one computer uh, from the BBC it has things like some LEDs some buttons uh, there's an accelerometer and a compass and some things on here uh, very nice little all-in-one board you plug it into your computer and you can start programming it and so I showed how you can use this Python editor uh, that the BBC has that uh, you write your Python code and you basically download a file and you copy it onto the board. So the board shows up as a disk drive when you connect it to your computer and you drag your, effectively your code, although it's actually the hex code for the firmware, you drag that onto the board and it programs it. Uh, but one thing that we didn't look at was this top option here, this JavaScript block editor, this thing called PXT. And this is actually really cool. So we'll, we'll take a quick look at this. Uh, and what it can do, and then maybe look at how we can maybe use this with a board like this guy, the Feather M0 um, Express board, and maybe even something like this in the future. This is the Circuit Playground Express board. So we'll look at some options here. But anyways, okay, so I clicked the JavaScript, uh, the block-based editor for the micro bit, and it opens you up to this web editing environment. And it's uh, it's got a lot of things going on, but it's it's really just two different big things that are happening here. So on the left, you have a simulator, and this is really cool. It's actually showing you what's gonna happen when this thing on the right, which is your code, actually runs. And as you can tell, this code is using a visual programming language. So this is based on a language called Scratch, uh, which is pretty popular with kind of teaching and learning computer science. So it turns your control flow into blocks of code that you can drag around. So you can actually see, so this top level block right here this forever loop is basically your main program or if you're used to arduino your loop function and everything inside of there is the code that runs so it goes through step by step and this first instruction uh, is going to actually run and so it's this show icon instruction uh, and if you hover over it, it'll actually show you kind of what it does and it, this is pretty cool so it gives you this nice visual environment uh, you can change the type of the icon for this uh, instruction so there's like uh, of silly or fabulous. I don't know what that fabulous represents. That's interesting. Um, the meh, oh, I see that's like a meh smiley face. Uh, I guess the fabulous is like uh, your eyes are like, whoa, this is really cool. 
Uh, T-shirt. Oh, that's interesting. That's kind of funny. Uh, I like uh, what they did. The giraffe. That's my favorite one. We'll pick the giraffe. So you, you can obviously change, uh, you know, these graphics. You can pick other blocks. So if I want to maybe, so the way, like if we step through this code and just see what it's doing, it's going to show the icon. It will do this pause instruction. So you can see it's kind of showing there's this arrow that points down to the next instruction. So it's going to pause for uh, 1000 milliseconds or one second. And then it's gonna run this show LEDs command, but none of the LEDs are turned on. If I wanted, I could say like, hey, let's just turn on like an X of LEDs. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. You're just visually changing, you know, how you want this to work. And it's really neat though. I mean, if you notice this simulator is updating as I go. So it's showing the icon, it's pausing, and then it shows my X real quickly. And then it goes to this uh, scroll a message, show the string, hello world. You know, I can say hello from Tony if I want. And then this is gonna uh, update in a second here. So you can get the draft, get the X, and then hello from Tony. Uh, and then it pauses and just goes back to the top and loops again. But you can do all kinds of cool stuff in here. Like, you know, if I wanted to play music, I can pick a music block in here. Um, you know, let's say, how about start melody? Uh, sure, da da dum, repeating once, so it'll throw it in here. This is kind of cool too. So as I, you know, you notice I dragged on the start melody block. There's no speaker built into the micro bit, as I uh, showed in the last video with MicroPython. Uh, just in general, if you want to get sound, you have to hook up a speaker. So this is kind of cool. It's showing you how to wire up to like an audio input. Uh, oh, and it's actually so now the simulator is playing uh, the sound right now. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and if I want, I can remove blocks, like I delete this block and it's gone. So that's pretty cool. And there's all kinds of stuff that they've put into the blocks here. So pretty much all of the features of the board are exposed as blocks. So in the basic blocks, you can do things like control the grid of LEDs that are on here. Um, you know, you can do things like scroll a message. There are input blocks that let you read uh, those three little inputs that are down here. There's even more inputs, like I mentioned, if you uh, connect this to like a breakout board. Uh, like we saw, you can play music, you can control some LEDs. There's even like the radio control, like I was showing in MicroPython. So you can have one micro bit talk to another micro bit wirelessly. So that's pretty cool. So this is a way to uh, control that. Just again, using the block based language. So, you know, if I wanted, I just drag onto here and say, okay, let's send the number, you know, 100 after it gets through this loop. And so that's pretty cool. It's, it would do that. Uh, oh, and the other one neat feature I wanted to show with this simulator. Uh, if you use the accelerometer, let me see where that thing is. Um, yeah, so if I pick an acceleration value, so let's see, uh, how about this on shake? Let's see how I can do this. Uh, maybe that's not the best option here. This That's kind of funny though. You can see uh, because I dragged this radio block over, it's actually showing a second micro bit uh, because I, I believe it's trying to show me that you know, if I wanted two of them to communicate, the simulator would show two of them there. Let me delete this radio though. Uh, but I just wanted to show with the accelerometer, it can actually let you simulate input to it by shaking or moving this uh, simulator block. So let's go back and let's just see, um, okay, let's just have it set a variable. Um, so let's just have it set item, that's fine. You can actually create like a new name for a variable, uh, do all kinds of advanced things. The same type of stuff you would do in Arduino, you're just doing it with this visual language. Uh, but let's set it, instead of to the value zero, let's set this to the acceleration on the x-axis, for example. So, okay. So now this should be a uh, 3D view. I don't maybe it's maybe I don't have this working correctly, but uh, at least when I'd seen this last, uh, there was an interesting mode where it, it would turn into a 3D representation of your micro bit and you could actually move it with your mouse. So, I don't know, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's still in progress or something. Uh, but again, it's a really cool little environment here. Oh, there we go. Okay, now it's doing the uh, the little 3D view. I guess just as I move my mouse over here, uh, it's it's actually you know simulating as if I was moving the board itself like that. And then it would change the value that this item variable is getting. So obviously not the most interesting program here, but you could use that acceleration value to maybe like modulate the lights and things like that. Um, with this. So pretty cool what they've done. Um, let me just delete this though, since it's not this line of, uh, of code is not doing anything. Oops, let's uh, delete these two blocks here. Uh, okay, and so you can actually program your micro bit with this code. So uh, the way it works is you click download, that's going to build a firmware file, this micro bit uh, untitled hex file. And then what you do is you plug in your micro bit. And like I showed in the first video or the previous video, just like with uh, MicroPython, 
you know, you copy over this file to your board. Um, so your board will show up as a drive, um, or at least it should. There we go. So there's my micro bit drive right here. And then in my downloads, I have this hex file that when I click download, it gave me. And so I'm just going to copy that onto my board and it's flashing to the board right now. There's a light on the back that's uh, flashing. And then when it's done, it will start running my program in a second here. So you'll see, so there's a draft and then the X and then hello world or hello Tony uh, is gonna scroll across there. So that's pretty cool. And I didn't have to install anything on my computer. Uh, I literally just went to this web page, built a little visual program, clicked the download, connected my micro bit and dragged the file over. So that's pretty slick and pretty cool. Uh, to get started and get going. You, know, you don't have to install this IDE and all kinds of complex things. Um, so that's neat, but it goes even further with this um, editor. So you might have noticed there's this JavaScript tab at the top. And when I click that, what it's actually doing is it's converting that block-based code into JavaScript, or actually it's TypeScript code, which is a subset of JavaScript. Um, and so this is the code representation of what those blocks were doing. And um, it's a little bit simplified in that it's calling functions. So, you know, there's a show icon function. So you're not seeing all the gory details about, you know, what the actual firmware is doing to, uh, you know, light up all these different lights and things like that. Uh, but it's still pretty cool that you can make that leap between, you know, when you see the block code and then the actual uh, JavaScript code, like, you know, what does that mean? If I wanted to understand, you know, what is what does it mean to call this show LEDs function? Um, you know, I can go back to the block code and kind of see. Now, the really cool thing is um, it actually lets you update both ways this code. So if I want, I can change, you know, let's uh, let's delete this and let's uh, let's maybe change this animation. So let's make it uh, do like maybe a, a little smiley face. So it looks like you put these pound symbols where you want the LEDs to be lit up and then a period where you don't want them lit up. So let's do that. Now, if I go back to blocks, then notice this, it actually parsed out the code, figured out what I was doing and re-represented it as blocks. And you can actually get really advanced. Um, you know, you can go inside of here and I can call other functions. Like if I wanna do uh, basic dot show string, um, you know, hello again after this, uh, then, and then if I go back to the block mode, it will actually figure out, you know, I've added a new instruction and it figured out this is a show string call and here's the parameter that I've sent into it. Um, so really impressive stuff. And again, this is all created by Microsoft. Um, this team within Microsoft has created this for the micro bit. Uh, they've done a really cool job with making this visual editor uh, and also having this, this code option here. So really cool thing I just wanted to show as another way to program the micro bit. So I was showing MicroPython, uh, but this again is a really cool option. And this might be a really nice option, you know, if you're a beginner and you're getting started and you start with the blocks because it's a little bit easier to kind of grasp and understand, you know, what options you have available. You can just look, it's almost like a palette, like you're painting something, you know, okay, what are my loop options? Okay, I've got this repeat loop, this while loop, so I can just see what's available. I can drag them onto the surface here and it kind of shows me, okay, you know, I, I created this loop and so it needs to do something inside of there. So I don't know, let's put something inside of there. Like, um, you know, maybe, oh, how about a, a, a music one? So like if it plays, uh, you know, start the melody, something like that, you know, and then it'll play that melody a bunch of times over and over. Uh, but this is really cool. And then the neat thing is once you have a program and you've created something really interesting with the blocks, if you wanna go further and start understanding, okay, what would this look like in code? You just dive right into the JavaScript mode. And this is really cool. Like I added those extra blocks and now it's showing me, you know, here's that loop that I created. It's actually showing me the for loop syntax for that. Um, and then the function that's getting called inside of there. And again, if I wanna like, you know, start experimenting with, okay, like what if I wanna make this loop 10 times? Um, I can change the code right here. But then if I get a little bit unsure about what's happening, I can jump back to the block mode um, and it's uh, actually, and it should work. Oh, that's interesting. Loop for I, oh, <laughs> kind of interesting. It looks like the, the loop block got a little more advanced. Uh, so, you know, hey, this is, it's kind of, it's doing its, uh, its best effort at kind of converting because taking that source code and representing it back as blocks is actually a really complex problem. Um, of course, now it's playing the melody. So let me just delete that block so it doesn't do it. That's really a hard problem because it, it has to parse that source code. 
uh, and almost like a compiler and figure out what is it doing and then figure out how to turn that back into the blocks. Um, so it's, it's actually really impressive uh, what's happening here. And you actually don't even see something else that's really impressive with this tool. Um, you know, when you click this download and get the code to upload onto your board, you might be wondering like, where is it actually compiling that code? Um, and it's not on a cloud server, it's actually in the browser. Uh, this Microsoft team has built a compiler that's running in JavaScript that's compiling code for this little microbit processor, the NRF51. Um, and it gives you this hex file then that is copied over to the board and programs the board. So again, that's some really impressive tech um, in this uh, make code tool um, that's definitely worth checking out with the microbit. So, okay, so that's what I wanted to show real fast was just a um, you know quick little overview, another way to use the micro bit using this visual programming language. And again, the way to get to this is to go to microbit.org and I'll put links to all of these in the description when this goes up on YouTube so you can find these links um, and go to the JavaScript blocks editor, this PXT thing. The PXT team is actually the team from Microsoft um, that created this. Uh, there's another way to get to this editor though. So you can go to makecode.com um, and this is a site that Microsoft created. And you've got right here the microbit editor. So you click this and you're straight back into the same editor that we saw right here. So two ways to get to this editor. Now you might notice something on this web page here. So this is pretty cool. There is an Adafruit Circuit Playground Express board uh, mentioned right here. So this is something uh, to look forward to in the future. Uh, and so, you know, I just opened this up and this is pretty much what we just saw with uh, the micro bit, but for this board, which is not out yet, uh, but this is the, the Circuit Playground Express board from Adafruit. Uh, and it's actually showing an, an old program right now that I had, so let me just delete um, all this stuff and we'll kind of start over. Uh, but anyways, this is Circuit Playground, which is a board from Adafruit that's like the micro bit. So it has a bunch of components built into it. It has some uh, NeoPixels, there are 10 NeoPixels uh, around the ring of this. Uh, there's a, an accelerometer in the center, so you can detect kind of, you know, tilt and motion and shaking it. Um, there's a little microphone, there's a speaker, the same kind of features that we have in the current Circuit Playground. So if you go to adafruit.com, uh, there is a board right now called Circuit Playground that you can get um, that I have. I always have one nearby, usually. Uh, and in this case, I only have Circuit Playground Expresses. This was my... Uh, Iron Man uh, arc reactor one. So unfortunately, I don't have a classic circuit playground uh, next to me. Uh, oh, no, actually, I do. It's on this side of me. So let me uh, grab this board. And this is a circuit playground. It's actually a circuit playground with a ring of NeoPixels around it. But you can get this circuit playground board right now. And again, it has these components. It has some buttons um, and things connected to it. But you have to program the current circuit playground using the Arduino IDE because it uses the same microprocessor as an Arduino board, like the uh, Arduino Leonardo. That's this 18 mega 32U4. So you have to install the Arduino IDE. Um, you have to sometimes install some drivers and things like that to make the board programmable. But something to look forward to with this board. So this is the Circuit Playground Express board and it's not out yet. Uh, maybe in a few weeks or so, potentially, um, we'll, we'll see it soon. But basically this board, it's, it's very similar to the Circuit Playground board, except it has a better processor. It has the SAMD21 processor, which is the same processor as this board right here, which you can buy right now. This is the Feather M0 Express board. So the SAMD21 processor, it's the same processor as used in the Arduino Zero, a really popular processor that we've been having a lot of fun with and using in a lot of Adafruit's boards, but it has a lot more advanced capabilities and it can start to do things like the microbit board where you can program it just like it's a USB drive. So you can get a firmware file and you can copy that firmware file onto the board by just plugging the board into your computer. It shows up as a little drive. My, my cat's running around right now, so we'll see if she runs over here and wants to uh, deploy with the board. But anyways, you can, uh, you can program this just by dragging a firmware file onto it just like we saw with the micro bit right here. And so that opens up a lot of cool possibilities like this web editor right here. So this is some cool stuff um, happening with this uh, Microsoft team where they've done a version of this web editor uh, to support this Circuit Playground Express board. And again, this is all beta stuff. It's not out yet, don't ask. It might change, who knows if it's gonna work or if this is the final form of it or whatever. Uh, but I figured I'd give a quick little preview of this and then maybe explain a little bit about how this 
drive uh, programming works. So, and, and Lady Ada actually did a whole video that dives more deeply into the way this works using this special bootloader. It's called this UF2 bootloader. So I'm not gonna get into all the details about that, but I'll put a link in the description when this goes up on YouTube. You can actually see um, this video right here from yesterday where Lady Ada goes into more details about how this works. Uh, but I'll just give a quick demo of what it looks like uh, to program this board. And then I'll actually show you, um, you actually can use this web editor right now with the Feather M0 Express board. So this is a board you can buy right now in the shop. Just came out a couple weeks ago. Um, and this is made for running like CircuitPython, for example. And I've actually shown a video on how to load CircuitPython onto here using this really neat little UF2 drive-based bootloader. But you can actually use this web editor because it's the same chip as the Circuit Playground Express board, the SAMD21 chip. Uh, and you know most of the pins and things are the same. So uh, I'll show a quick demo of maybe um, you know using this board from the PXT web editor. Uh, obviously this board, the Circuit Playground or the Feather M0 Express doesn't have all the things built into it like the Circuit Playground. So you don't have buttons built into it. There is a NeoPixel built into it, but you don't have a ring of 10 of them. There's no microphone, there's no uh, speaker, that type of stuff in, built into it. So you can't use those features. But you can do basic things. You can, you know, blink some LEDs or hook up some external devices. Um, anyways, though, so just like the micro bit version of this editor for the Circuit Playground Express, um, you pick the code blocks, you drag them onto the surface here. So I need like a main control block here, like a forever loop. Um, and then if I want the lights on the board, um, they've kind of simplified things. And so I can show different animations here. So this will show a rainbow animation and it's showing it across all 10 of the NeoPixels. And again, there's a whole simulator here. So it's showing a simulation of what my code's gonna do. Oh, here comes my cat. We'll see if uh, she jumps up and wants to, to check out what's going on. Uh, anyways though, so you can see like, here's the animation. Uh, you can actually change these animations. Um, so there are different types of animations. I think under here, they've got them. So uh, let's see, what does the comet animation look like? So if I drag this on here, then uh, this does this kind of neat, looks like it's like just spinning around kind of different color animation. Um, if I want, I can put like some delay inside of here. So if I want to add like a pause, 100 milliseconds of pause in between each animation frame, um, I can do that. So you can see kind of what, what the comet animation is doing. Um, if I want, I can like read some of the inputs and outputs of the board uh, with the pin options here. So, you know, do like digital reads, analog reads, that type of stuff. Uh, this is kind of cool, like servo writes. So if I wanted to hook up a servo and, you know, move it back and forth, I can do that by connecting it to uh, some of the outer pins on the Circuit Playground board. So, you know, really cool. Again, just like the micro bit, you know, you create your uh, block-based code. And then just like the micro bit, um, this is programmed by plugging it into your computer. So I'll do that here. Oops, let me get it the right orientation. And then um, in this case, I need to double tap the reset button right here. So when I do that, you can see the little pin, the uh, D13, digital pin 13 LED, it's pulsing on and off. So it's it's glowing, um, you know, it goes uh, bright and then, uh, and then off and then back to bright again. So that's telling me that it's waiting to be programmed. Uh, I'm gonna click the download here. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna give me this .uf2 file. So with the micro bit you saw, I got a hex file, but now I got this uf2 file. Uh, and then what I wanna do is I'll go to my downloads. As you can see, I have this um, uh, Circuit Playground Untitled uf2. And then right here, I have this cplay boot drive. So let's drag this file onto my cplay boot. Uh, oh, there, there comes the cat. She wants to check this out now. She's very interested in programming. And okay, see, it just programmed that uh, animation onto the board right there. So you can see it's doing that uh, comet animation with a hundred millisecond delay in between each animation frame. Um, so that's really cool. Again, you know, it's a programming workflow that doesn't require any installation. I'm just going to this web editor. Uh, I'm creating the code with this block-based language. Again, though, just like with the micro bit editor, um, you can go into the JavaScript mode and it converts your block-based code into the JavaScript representation of it. You can make changes here and go back to the block-based code and it will update it. Um, so it's doing all of that magic to kind of parse out what your code is doing and turn it back into blocks. Um, and again, just like the micro bit code, when I click that download, it's actually compiling code for that SAMD21 processor uh, in my browser in JavaScript, 
giving me that hex file or that dot uf2 file rather uh, and then I'm able to program that onto the board by just dragging it onto the board. Um, so that's really cool and something you know interesting to look forward to um, with this board. Now, like I mentioned, you can actually use this editor with a board that's in the shop right now. So this is the Feather M0 Express board. Um, uh, and I'll put a link to the video that I did a few weeks ago about how to load CircuitPython onto this board. Uh, but you can technically use this right now with this Microsoft editor. Um, you can't do as much with it because again, like I said, it doesn't have uh, all of the, the same features as a circuit playground. So for example, this program doesn't mean anything for uh, my board right now because although it does have a NeoPixel built into it, uh, this editor isn't really built to, to work with that right now. Uh, but I can do something basic though. So like if I delete um, you know, everything, I can flash the little pin 13 LED on this board if I want. So that's just basically a digital write to pin D13. So if I take D13 and if I set that to a value of one, it's gonna turn that uh, LED on. And then I probably want to add a delay. So if I drag a little delay, let's, let's make it like half a uh, second. And then uh, this is a cool thing, you could actually copy and paste. So if I copy and then paste, uh, it's actually pasting this digital write. So let's set it to zero, so that'll turn the LED off. And then let's put that delay, I'll copy and paste that delay in there. And uh, so that's gonna create the code that should blink this LED. Uh, it looks like the simulator doesn't really simulate this LED right now. So again, this is beta stuff. Uh, it's you know, maybe not all implemented. Uh, but if I click this download, again, this is gonna give me this .uf2 file. And I'm gonna need to drag this onto the Circuit Playground boot drive. So right now you can see it's actually, my drive is showing up as CircuitPy, and that's because I've loaded CircuitPython on here. But like I mentioned, I wanna double tap the reset button, and now I see the board is um, pulsing that red LED, and you can see it actually changed now. It's called Feather Boot, and that's just because on the Feather boards, uh, the, the drive is called Feather Boot when it's in this bootloader mode. Uh, so, you know, it's in that mode, it's ready to, to accept that UF2 file. If I go into my downloads and I grab this board, and I or this UF2 file and I copy it onto the board, it's gonna program it. And now you can see the red LED is actually pulsing, uh, or blinking rather, at that rate of uh, once every uh, 500 milliseconds. So it's like basically every half second, it's turning on and off. Uh, the NeoPixel right here, because I didn't do anything with it, it just turned on because of the random noise. Um, you know, So like I said, it, this is, not this editor is isn't made to work with this board uh yet potentially uh so you know it doesn't really know that there's a neopixel built into here it's not turning it off explicitly but you could potentially control it uh there are blocks inside of here in the light block you can set um there's actually you can create a neopixel strip and attach it to one of the outputs um, and then if you really wanted, you can actually go in and like start writing some of this JavaScript code and you don't even have to use the block-based editor to do this. Uh, so you could get kind of advanced and, and use this uh, in some ways as a replacement for the Arduino IDE. You know, you could do all of your programming just in a different language in this JavaScript or TypeScript uh, actually based language. Um, so, you know, again, really cool stuff to check out. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention was just uh, a real brief mention of how this actually works or like what's the magic that's letting me drag these files around and program them um, onto this board and so like i mentioned uh, and actually scott just did a little blog post today uh, about this uf2 boat bootloader on the m0 express boards and so that's the magic here is the bootloader is the code uh, that runs as soon as the board starts up so as soon as you apply power to the board it's the very first thing that the chip runs and for some boards like Arduino's, uh, they basically wait to see, has the Arduino IDE tried to send me um, a, a new program? And then they'll program themselves if they get that. And if they don't see that, then they just run whatever user program was last programmed to them. Uh, so the bootloader is, you know, it's kind of, you might think of it as an operating system in the sense that like when you start up your computer, your operating system is the first thing that runs. And then once the operating system loads, you know, then you can start running your programs like Word or your web browser or whatever. Um, you know, the bootloader is kind of similar to that in that it's, you know, it's something that runs, but it's meant to just run your user program uh, and get out of the way, basically. Um, you know, it's not nearly as complete as an operating system. Like it's not giving you all these functions. 
uh, but it's this tiny little thing and it's kind of the thing that lets you program the board. And so the bootloaders can be really simple, like in the Arduino case, you know, it just talks this very special USB protocol or serial protocol actually that lets you send a program to it over a serial connection uh, and reprogram itself. Or it can be pretty advanced, like you know we saw with the micro bit, it's got that mode where it shows up as a USB drive and you drag a hex file onto it. Or with the SAMD21 boards, or basically these, these are the express boards, the M0 express boards, um, they have this bootloader that can act like a USB drive. And so that's what's happening when I double tap uh, the reset button here. And so now you know that LED is pulsing and it'll show up in a second as a drive. So you can see here's that feather boot drive that just showed up. And actually the neat thing with this, this UF2 bootloader code, uh, it, you can actually pull the current firmware off of the board. So this current.uf2 is that blink sketch that I just uh, copied over. I can pull that off. Uh, you can't really disassemble it right now, but maybe in the future there would be a tool that lets you, you know, see what program was last on your board. Um, you know, so that would be kind of cool. Uh, but anyways, though, so that that's what this bootloader is doing, though. It's it's looking like it creates something that looks like a USB drive, but it's not a complete USB drive. Um, and so I, I won't go into all the details here, but check out this video that I'll link to um, that Lady Ada did. And there's also an excellent blog post that the Microsoft uh, team did because they actually created this bootloader. And so they go into details about how this works at a lower level and what this UF2 format is. It's actually kind of interesting because there's some challenges when you make something that looks like a USB drive, your operating system expects it to work in a certain way where USB drives, they don't operate at a file level. You know, when you drag a photo onto your USB stick, it's not your operating system telling the USB drive, here's a photo, you know, here's the file name and here's the data inside of it. It's actually at a lower level where it just deals with these little blocks of file of, of data and the drive itself has no idea if it's a, a photo that's being copied over or a text file or even like what the file name is. It's really just your operating system that knows about that. So there's some challenges because when you want to make a bootloader, you want it to only work with, you know, these hex files or UF2 files. You know, I only want it to take a program file and try to program that onto my board. I don't want it to try to take a photo file, for example, and try to program that onto the board because that's just going to be garbage. It's not going to mean anything. So there's some cool challenges or some cool things they did to overcome some of those challenges um, with that. And so definitely I highly recommend checking out this blog post. Uh, it talks about this UF2 format and how it simplifies things because there's also another constraint here in that this bootload, bootloader code needs to be very small because the larger your bootloader is, that just means the less that your program has to work with because this chip only has 256 kilobytes of flash memory. So if you use 200 kilobytes for your bootloader, you'll have a really advanced bootloader, but you've only got 56 kilobytes left for your program. Uh, so the bootloader code is actually limited to eight kilobytes. So it's kind of a question of, can you do all of this complex USB drive stuff within eight kilobytes of code? And it turns out you can, uh, you know, doing some of this cool stuff that uh, the Microsoft team did here. So definitely check out these resources just to, if you're curious to learn more about how this UF2 bootloader works. Uh, but to keep an eye out for all of the Feather M0, all of the M0 boards, uh, the Express boards in particular, in the future, they'll have this UF2 bootloader on them uh, by default. And so you'll be able to program them using tools like this Make Code Editor uh, and MicroPython, CircuitPython, you know, by just dragging that firmware onto there. And so again, I'll show uh, how to load CircuitPython onto this board again, because you know right now it's running that little uh, Arduino style sketch that I put on here. So I just need to drag my CircuitPython UF2 file and that will wipe away that uh, make code sketch that I had running right here and it'll replace it with CircuitPython. So, you know, again, it's just a neat advantage of this UF2 and, and this uh, file or this disk based bootloader. If I want to change my program, I just have to copy a file over. I don't have to run some tool or install some software to make this work. Uh, and then one little new thing that I'll mention too, there's actually a daily build now of all of the CircuitPython firmware. So this is the latest version of CircuitPython just straight from the code that's on GitHub. Um, so if you want, and I'll put a link in the description uh, up on YouTube, you can go to this Amazon AWS bucket and there's some automation so that anytime the code changes in the GitHub repository, it will make a new build and generate all of these firmwares in both 
the bin file and the UF2 file format. So for example, for my Feather M0 Express, I can uh, go down into this directory and then it shows me all of the different firmware files. And so the top one right here, you can see there's one that was created a few days ago when the repository was last updated. So the Feather M0 Express, and there are two versions of this. There's the .bin and the .uf2. And so again, I wanna grab the .uf2 file. You cannot use the bin file to program the board using this um, drive method. The bin file is for if you're using the BASA tool, uh, which we mentioned in the guide and I've shown in some videos in the past. Uh, that's a command line based tool to program the board. Good backup option, but like I said, this UF2 mode is kind of the, the future of how we wanna program these uh, M0 boards. So I'll download this file uh, and then I'll show you how to program this. And I might run into a little problem and if I don't, I'll, I'll explain uh, there's a weird little bug or quirk that I ran into with, with this. But so again, I downloaded this file. I'm gonna double tap, or actually, well, I've already double tapped the reset. So it's, you know, it's in the mode where it's waiting for me to uh, copy over a file. So if I open up Finder again, oops. So again, so here's my Feather boot uh, drive. And if I just, I wanna hover over just so, so you can see it's, it's in the bootloader mode, it's waiting for that. If I go to my downloads, here's that UF2 file. This is Circuit Python firmware. So if I drag this onto the board, we'll see it looks like it's programming it. Okay, yeah, so it just programmed it with CircuitPython. Uh, if you see an error, if you get an error that says it ran out of space, try renaming this file to current.uf2 and then copy it over. It's, we're still investigating, maybe some kind of a weird bug uh, with the bootloader, but just in case you run into some issue, I ran into it earlier today, uh, so thought I'd mention it. But so I dragged that file over and now this board is running CircuitPython. So, you know, I could open up a terminal and we'll make it really big so you can see. But if I connect with the screen tool to the uh, serial port of this drive, then I've got my Python REPL here. And so, you know, I've got Python code uh, running on here. So again, it's, you know, programming this board is as easy as dragging a file over. So I can use CircuitPython firmware, just drag that CircuitPython UF2 file over the board or I can create something cool with a, a visual editor like this make code editor, and I get that uh, UF2 file by clicking download, and I drag it over the board, and it programs you know whatever code I've created in the editor here. So really cool stuff that uh, I think you'll see a lot more of in the future, particularly with uh, you know this fun board here once uh, this comes out. So this is the, the uh, Circuit Playground Express board, but you know you can also use it right now technically with uh, some of the Feather M0 Express boards that we already have in the shop. So worth uh, checking out. Uh, okay, so that's it. So I'll wrap up this stream. Um, if there are questions, throw them into the chat and I'll see if I can get to them. Uh, let's see, let me go back to the main view. Uh, let's see, someone was saying, uh, how well does TypeScript work for this? Uh, yeah, so they don't wanna do embedded in, in the C language anymore. Uh, good question. So actually here, let me jump back to the desktop view. Uh, yeah, like I mentioned, this make code editor, uh, when you go into the JavaScript mode, uh, although this is JavaScript code, it's actually TypeScript, which is a subset of JavaScript. It's actually a stricter version of JavaScript because the JavaScript programming language itself is, um, uh, let me think of the best way to say this. I guess, uh, you know, there, it's a very complex language. Uh, it gives you a lot of rope, which you can use to hang yourself in various ways. Uh, so a lot of people have looked at how to simplify JavaScript um, and sometimes make it more strict so that it's less easy to make uh, common mistakes. Like it's very easy in JavaScript to write code that you know in C and C++ might not even compile um, or would maybe not make any sense at all. Whereas in JavaScript, you know, you could compare like if a number is equal to a string and in C and C++, that won't even compile. The compiler will tell you, hey, I don't know how to compile a number in a string or how to compare a number in a string. Whereas in JavaScript, it says, oh, you're trying to compare a number and a string. Well, I will just implicitly convert that number into a string and then do that comparison for you because that's probably what you wanted to do. But in a lot of cases, maybe that's not what you wanted to do. And then you get some weird bugs in your program for that. Anyways, so TypeScript is uh, a, a kind of a, an abstraction uh, built on top of JavaScript. And I don't know all the details. I actually am not familiar with TypeScript, but uh, in the Microsoft editor, they actually have this uh, nice little help page that goes into more details about uh, TypeScript. And so it talks about what it supports. So it's, they call it static JavaScript or TypeScript. 
Uh, and so it's it just has more constraints. It doesn't let you do as much uh, stuff as JavaScript uh, in the sense that I don't think it lets you do like really crazy things. Um, you know, like maybe it doesn't let you compare, you know, strings versus uh, numbers as easily in JavaScript, for example. Uh, but it tells you here what it supports and what it doesn't support, for example. So definitely check this out. Um, you know, I haven't used TypeScript much myself, but I know that uh, I believe this entire editor itself is built in TypeScript. So if you're wondering how capable is TypeScript, it looks like it's pretty capable. I mean, it can build an entire editing experience with a compiler and everything built into it. So. Um, so it seems like it's certainly capable enough, but again, yeah, if you're a JavaScript editor or if you're a JavaScript um, user, you you might need to learn a little bit of uh, kind of uh, maybe, I don't know, different conventions for how TypeScript works. So, but check out the help documents here. It looks like it has some pretty good uh, details on what you can do with this. Um, so, cool. Uh, I think that's it then. That was all the questions. So I will wrap this up. Uh, let's see, we'll jump back to the main view real fast. So thanks for watching. This is Tony from Adafruit. We looked at the micro bit and a, another way to program it. So like I said, in the previous video that's linked below in the description, I showed how to program this board with MicroPython. In this video, I showed how to program it using this visual editor from Microsoft uh, that's called Make Code. And so you can just drag blocks of control flow or animation or you know music generation, anything you can control on this micro bit board, you can uh, drag and drop on this editor to create programs. And I showed how it's easy to program just from your editor. You download a file and drag it onto the micro bit as a little drive that it shows up on your computer. And then we looked at how there's a similar thing that's coming for a lot of the boards from Adafruit, like the Feather M0 Express and the Circuit Playground Express board. And those are all based on this UF2 bootloader, which is a really cool file-based or drive, USB drive-based bootloading mode. So again, you have this visual editor uh, that you can create programs by just dragging blocks and things together. You get, you click the download button to get a file and you drag it onto the board and it programs it. So it's very easy, no tools to install. It's just something that uh, technically you could use from like a Chromebook uh, or maybe even like an Android device or something like that that lets you access uh, USB drives. So a really cool thing that will hopefully make it easier to um, use some of these boards in the future. So keep your eyes peeled for more interesting stuff uh, from us uh, with the UF2 boards. Uh, okay, so until next time, check out uh, youtube.com slash Adafruit. You can see this video, all kinds of other fun project videos, and check out twitch.tv slash Adafruit. You can see me streaming these things live. I like to do a video um, every Friday or so. And been digging into a lot of MicroPython and CircuitPython stuff. Took a little bit of a detour in the last couple of videos to look at the micro bit, just because, you know, like I said, this is a really cool board. And I think, uh, you know, a sign of the future of a lot of the boards we'll see. You know, I bet a year from now there will be a lot more boards like the uh, micro bit. You know, we've already got Circuit Playground from Adafruit. Who knows? We'll see if there are other boards that are coming. But I think, you know, there's a definite audience that wants the all-in-one board that has interesting things. You don't have to solder all these components to. So I figured I'd look at the micro bit, but uh, you know, maybe next week we'll get back to some more CircuitPython and interesting content like that. Uh, if you like this content, click the like, the subscribe, uh, the comment button. You know, let us know that this is interesting stuff, and we'll keep creating content like this. So until next time, this is Tony from Adafruit. So thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you later. Bye.